motherfucker. Making distress, that's the way that I get things done. If I'm not a depression, then I sleep too long. And I hang around like a thot. I think I'm going nowhere and that makes me nervous. Everybody's at the game, but I feel all right. Everybody's at the game, but I feel all right. Oh, you'd think from my calm demeanor that I haven't got a care in the world, but you'd be wrong. You see, hidden within this podium are two very valuable portraits. The Fallen Madonna with the big boobies by Van Klomp, and the Cracked Vase with the big daisies by Van Gogh. The main problem is, the uh, occupying German forces want these paintings. I have several forgeries hidden in a couple of Knockwursts in the cellar, but Herr Otto Flick of the Gestapo strongly suspects I have them. In addition to this, I'm trying to hide my affair with Yvette from Madame Edith, my affair with Mimi LeBanc from Yvette, and my affair with Michelle from the Resistance from Mimi LeBanc, Yvette, and Madame Edith. Also today, I've learned how difficult it is to summarise the entire plot of A Low A Low in a single take. For me, it is impossible. I didn't even get to the bit with the head of the communist resistance. Recently, a little spat cropped up involving everybody's favourite game engine, Unity. The Notorious engine is something we've talked about before, since its name has come up in association with some of the very worst games imaginable. From the most ubiquitous asset flip of them all, Unit Z, to classic stinkers like, well, this one, the Unity engine has powered some utter shit. It's also behind some terrific games like Hearthstone, Hand of Fate, and Volume, the latter being fantastic because I was in it. Unity is a relatively easy engine to use with a lot of stock assets available in order to save money and time, and that's great. However, because it gives developers an inch and some lazy hacks decided to take several hundred fucking miles, Unity's own reputation has suffered, to the point where there are those whose interest in a game will drop just because they see the name attached. And that's where the little argument started on that hotbed of intricate thought and complex debate, Twitter.com. It all started when game maker Adrian Forrest vented his frustration at the anti-Unity sentiment and decided to pin the blame on game journalism while posting a screenshot of someone saying they wouldn't buy a game after learning it was powered by Unity. Now I'm about the farthest thing from a game journalist that I could possibly be these days, and even back when you could almost say I was, I couldn't really say I was much of one. But I do talk about Unity a lot, and I was invariably roped in, and some of the blame was laid at my feet. But the main problem with Forrest's post isn't that he's annoyed about the bad rap Unity's got, but that he's being about as reductive as the person in the screenshot, deciding to pin it all on the media rather than, say, the people who took Unity and made thousands of bad games with it. Or, say, looking at Unity. Unity's own part in its reputation. As someone who talks about Unity a lot, I can only assume Adrian Forrest undoubtedly considers me among those who quote unquote fucked it up for him and his peers and that I should stop. Unfortunately for Adrian, I won't be stopping and I don't think many of my peers will stop doing it either because Unity is important. Its asset store has been responsible for the sale of entire products on Steam and next to Game Guru, it's the most famous engine of choice for the laziest of developers. Yes, it's also the engine of choice for committed quality developers as well and that definitely needs to be brought up. But when an engine has become so ingrained in the market and the culture around it, telling the media to stop talking about it is just fucking ludicrous. Forrest might believe we know jack shit about game engines, and that's true when regarding probably 99% of the complexities of game development. However, as someone who has played the very best and the very worst of games powered by it, I can't help but regularly encounter some of its notorious quirks. The engine has some bugs in it that any decent developer swiftly irons out, particularly physics issues. It's why the average Unit Z asset flip features zombies that go flying at random and adhere to no reasonable physics. A competent dev makes sure that doesn't happen happen, but when you get a no-effort chancer who thoughtlessly uploads pre-bought maps and fills them with pre-bought characters, the bugs get left in and become very clear telegraphs that the game you're playing is the work of a no-effort chancer. There are similar tells with other engines. I mean, I've played several games that use the stock CryEngine start menu, and I've seen Unreal Engine demo maps pop up as full games, quote-unquote. In these cases, the names of the engines have come up. And Forrest asks why the media talks only about the famous engines like Unity, CryEngine, and Unreal. Well, that's... Well, that's because they're famous. Right? 
As I said in my initial response to this whole argument, some engines are notorious for a reason, and when those reasons come up in the course of a critic's work, they have every right, quite possibly an obligation, to mention them. Ultimately, not talking about these engines is fucking stupid. Honest answer right there, it's fucking stupid not to mention engines in a world where engines have their own PR departments and want to be talked about. Unity has its own fucking convention with invited press and everything for God's bloody sake. And there's an audience with a legit interest in engines and I hate to break this to developers again. But as a critic, it's not my job to care about your bottom line, and it's certainly not my job to make you happy. Harsh, but true. If my talking about Unity is fucking something up for you, that sucks, friendo, but that's my job whether you agree it is or not. It is, because it's my job, and I just so happen to know what it fucking entails. To bring focus back to Unity again, though, there's no doubt that its reputation is spotty, to say the least. You see, no matter how many good games it powers, no matter what it's capable of, Unity does have an image problem, and nobody seems to care less about it than Unity itself. Let's look at one of the real reasons why Unity's name is in the gutter, shall we? It's this little logo right here. This little logo that you might come across whenever you start running a bad game made in Unity. Why bad? Well, because Unity comes in more than one flavour, and the free version forces you to run splash screens saying made in Unity. Can you guess the problem already? I'll give you all a moment to catch up with the bright students. Got it? Correct! A higher percentage of better made games, often with bigger budgets, will invest in the version of Unity that doesn't advertise the engine, while worse made games, produced as cheaply as possible, have a far higher chance of letting you know front and centre what the game was made with. This happens to a lesser extent with CryEngine, where the famous achieved with CryEngine phrase became contextually hilarious when said achievement looks like this fucking shit. The major difference is Crytek made damn sure to associate its engine first with games like, well, Crisis. In fact, the shared branding with Cry in the name was a stroke of marketing genius, and that's why CryEngine's rep isn't in the gutter, despite allowing many games that belong in the gutter to achieve existence. Unity, on the other hand, does not have a crisis. The public doesn't know what it achieved because the greatest games using it won't tell you they're using it. Again, I reiterate, Hearthstone uses Unity, one of the most popular and beloved games in existence, but nobody knows until somebody tells them. And while I speak only anecdotally, the common response I get when I tell people is shock. They can't believe it, because they see that Unity logo attached to utter garbage like this, and never to a game that looks like this. And what is Unity's response to its reputation? It doesn't care. Two years ago, Podquisition co-host Laura Kate asked the question I answered moments ago, does Unity have an image problem? And she asked the boss man himself, John Riccatello, if there's a problem. Funnily enough, and I didn't know this before I made the argument myself, but the executive pretty much mirrors my sentiments on the use of the Unity logo, suggesting maybe they've got it the wrong way round, and that maybe free users ought not to kick off their potential disasters with a commercial for the engine. Of course, this is Riccatello speaking, the former EA CEO, who has a habit of saying all the right things but never fucking acting upon them. So if you think Unity's gonna change anything anytime soon, you really ought to see some of the crowd-pleasing shit this man said and never followed through on in the past. His ultimate sentiment is that it's not his problem. I think there's a great debate to be had about how people who own computers shouldn't be able to use them to write evil messages to people, he told Laura. I don't think there's any mileage in that way of thinking about our product. Realistically, most of what's put up in the asset store comes from third-party developers that want to sell it. After that, somebody uses it. It's really not up to us to police that. Who are we to say they can't resell it unedited on Steam? I sense danger. Riccatello even admitted that what he said's a weak excuse and that his company ought to do something without turning it into a police state. What is something? John didn't have an answer in 2015, and given how things have stayed the same, he must still be thinking about it. When it was suggested that maybe the asset store not allow for the wholesale resale of pre-bought assets, Riccatello simply said that was Steam's problem, not his. And right now, Unity might not be feeling much of a problem. I've been reading a book that's gonna surely inspire a lot of topics in future, The Death of WCW. It's a great look at how any business, not just a wrestling one, can fail after having the world in its hands. And it can take 
explains a wrestling industry phrase that applies perfectly to games. To paraphrase, when the business is hot you can do no wrong, when the business is cold you can do nothing right. We'll examine what that means in detail in a future video, but for right now the brief explanation is that you can fuck up a lot while you're successful and not feel the damage, but that doesn't mean the damage isn't there. The man who had to step down as EA's CEO after feeling the damage might do well to think about that. And can we stop with the game industry doing the whole not my problem thing? Oh, it's not Unity's problem, it's Steam's. Oh, it's not Steam's problem, it's Unity's. Near as I can tell, you all share the same market, and a problem for one company has a good chance of being a problem for another. Unity and Steam both have reputations at stake regarding asset flips and other such bullshit. Why not work, say, and this is gonna sound wacky, together on a policy to help both companies out? But no course not. Neither organisation wants to look too strict, so it's easier to pass the buck back and forth and wring your hands about how more could be done, while never actually ever fucking doing more. And at the end of the day, you can all just sit back and blame game journalism or YouTubers and call yourself a business person. Fuck off. Make the bad guys cry. You motherfucker. Before we conclude class today, uh, I would like to put out a little call for some help. You see, last week, the evil corporation, World Wrestling Entertainment, possibly jealous that I have the best show that airs on a Monday, tried to block the entire Jimquisition worldwide because I used a couple of seconds of Stone Cold Steve Austin's hilarious CGI head from Unforgiven 2001. Look it up. Funnily enough, it is on YouTube, that intro. Uh, it is worth checking out. It's fucking funny. Now the main problem is, is I have an answer to this situation. I have a shot I can fire back, but I need someone who is skilled in costuming and who has a lot of spandex. A lot of spandex, if you get what I mean. Now, if you have some professional credentials, uh, this could be as simple as an Etsy store or something, just something I can track to make sure you're legit, and you'd like to do some paid work, and you have access to a lot of spandex, then get in contact with me. You can get my contact details on thegymquisition.com. Uh, if you feel you can do it, and, uh, well, it's going to take some describing, but um, get in contact, just, just let me know. And the rest of you, you need to do nothing, except one thing. Thank God for me, innit? It's, uh, it's my catchphrase. Ray! Oh, Ubisoft! It's time once again for Oh, Ubisoft! Bringing you the news that makes you roll your eyes and say, Oh, Ubisoft! Today, we're going to talk about For Honor. Do you remember For Honor? It's like the battleborn of multiplayer games. It had a strong start, because it's a hyped Ubisoft game, but funnily enough, having terrible connection problems and not much in the way of content led to the game losing 95% of its players. Well, not if you're Ubisoft, uh, because that figure becomes fake news. Quite literally. You see, despite games reporters using verifiable data to look at the huge fucking drop-off that Forerunner's player base has enjoyed, Ubisoft's community manager came out and blasted those reports as fake news, I'm not kidding. Now, it's unsure whether or not this was used in jest or not, I'm assuming the use of the term fake news was, you know, hilarious memes, but it does seem that Ubisoft is a little bit sensitive about the fact that a lot of people realised For Honor was, well, bollocks. Seriously, one of the quotes is, we have a lot of players in For Honor. I mean, that might be relatively true compared to many other games, but that doesn't really say contextually, respectively, what that means. You know, uh, the amount of players lost has been atrocious. So for Ubisoft to come out and just brush off the reporting as fake news, uh, even in jest, while clearly stating that they have a lot of players to try and undermine those reports, well, uh, it's a little bit desperate. Ubisoft, come on. 
Interestingly, a similar thing happened with The Division, uh, which has come up in you know, Ubisoft a lot because Ubisoft has lied about it before. Uh, that game also had a very strong launch and lost a lot of players and still might be relatively successful. But it says a lot, I think, about Ubisoft's approach to online games, to MMO-ish experiences, to microtransaction-layered multiplayer experiences that people buy them, play them, and then think, fuck them. And the rest of us just look at it all, roll our eyes and go, oh, Ubisoft. And that's it. Ah!